The following program was produced by the Denny Nation. This film is presented as part of CBC North's Access Programming. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of the CBC. is like this great river. It has been flowing since long before any of us can remember. We take our strength and our wisdom and our ways from the flow and direction that has been established for us by ancestors we never knew, ancestors of a thousand years ago. Our wisdom flows through us to our children and our grandchildren and to generations. We will never know. We will live out our lives as we must. And we will die in peace because we will know that our people in this river will flow on after us. The song of the people, the land of the people, the will of the people must win. The strong Danny nation, the sons of creation, free in the land they live in. In March 1978, at our National Assembly in Port Franklin, we proclaimed officially the Denon Nation. However, that proclamation did not create a new nation. We have always been a nation. More than 20,000 years before the time of Abraham and Moses, the Dene were already living here. Since then, we have created our own languages. We have lived according to our own values and culture. We developed our own economy. We had our own system of government. We have always been a nation. The word Dene simply means people. We are a people with a common history. Our history has been written all over our land. We have names for everything on our land, and that is our history book. Recently, the non-Dene who have come to our land have erased all these names. They want to steal and destroy our history. They want us to believe that we have no history. We had to make our own maps to show where we, the Dinji, travel. That's all our trails and trap lines. Look, here, this is Arctic Great River, and here is Tetlet, and this is Rat River. Long time ago, long before the Nandini made settlements, all this area was full of people. And all this here and across here, people live in all this area. Our life is part of the land. We live on the land and are satisfied with what we get from it. No one person owns the land. It belongs to all of us. We choose where we want to go and our choice is respected by others, whether in the settlement or in the bush. We have no word in our language that means wilderness, as anywhere we go is our home. The Dene feel that this is their land because the people have been living on it for a long, long time, and they are still living on it and they feel it is their land. A few years ago, Alexander Mackenzie came to our land. My people probably wondered at this strange, pale man in his ridiculous clothes, asking about some great waters he was searching for. We never understand why our river is named 
for such an insignificant fellow. I think people would find it pretty funny today if I went across to Europe and put a flag into their land saying I claim this land for the Dena people. When non-Dene came to our land, we saw them as curious strangers who had come to visit. We shared with them and helped them to survive. We could not conceive that they would not see the world as we do. We trusted what people said, for that was the way we had lived amongst ourselves. The Dene had no experience or understanding of a people who would try to control us, or who would say that somehow they owned the land that we had always lived on. In 1900, the Canadian government sent a treaty party to Fort Resolution to meet the Tetzel Dene, Clinchon Dene, Tuchkao Dene, inhabiting the shores of Great Slave Lake. Uh, My grandfather told me about the treaty. The people wanted his father to be chief. His name was Pierre Beaulieu. But the boss of the treaty party said to him, you cannot be the chief because you are a half-breed. That's what my grandfather told me. Government at the old Sampanahi as he could on the it is the government that divided the people with their treaty. All the Dene who live here, all the Dene live the same life. They all trap the same way, Indian or half-breed. They eat the same food. The half-breed and the treaty Dene are one people. By Treaty 8, the government recognized that we are a nation and that we have Aboriginal rights. And at the same time, it tried to extinguish our rights. Our chiefs and the people understood that the treaty was to protect their hunting, fishing, and trapping rights and to guarantee our control of our traditional land. Chief Draghi said, We have lived without your money to this day. My people will continue to live as they were before, and no white man will change that. You will in the future want us to live like white man does, and we do not want that. My people are happy as they are. If you try to change their way of life by treaty, you will destroy their happiness. There will be a bitter struggle between you and my people. Twenty years later, the government became interested in the valley of our big river. The Canadian government prepared a new treaty, Treaty No. 11. The Canadian government had sent Treaty Commissioner Conroy on a strange mission. He was instructed to negotiate with the Dene. However, he had been ordered not to change any word in the text of the treaty, which he brought all prepared from Ottawa. In every village, the Dene stood firm and asserted their right to control their resources and their land. Well, they talk about land, and the Indians were scared that they were taking treaty, that they would lose all their rights, but the Indians were told not. But if they were taking treaty, they would get protection. They were told it was not to get the land, but they would still be free to roam and hunt as usual. No interference. In 
Even after the treaty, southern trappers, prospectors, and adventurers invaded and plundered our land. We continuously demanded that the government keep its promises to respect our own laws. In 1937, the determination of our forefathers culminated in the boycott of the treaty days in Fort Resolution, Fort Ray, Rosher River, Snowdrift, and Yellowknife. The issue was not new. A headman had told the Indian agent, do you remember what you promised us before? The time they began the treaty? They kissed the Bible and everything. Why do you lie to us? Why do you do this? Why do you change now? You gave us money and paper. Now you want to change the law. We'll give you back all the money. We did without it long before. You can't pay us to be the boss of us. Why do you tell us how to run our land? We did not give it to you. After the war, around 1945, more drastic changes began to take place among us. It was around that time that settlements and schools were built. They told us, if you allow your children to go to school, we will help you and provide jobs for you. So, instead of living in a bush year-round, we began to live in this community. It was difficult to take our children out of school. And when they did complete their school, they didn't know how to live in a bush. The children who completed their schools were without jobs, so it created problems for all of us. The Northern Education Program of the 50s and 60s was launched with the ingredients for failure built into the structure at its very base. The people of Southern Canada proceeded to make the decisions for the native people. Since these people are not like us, they cannot be expected to make decisions like ours. Therefore, in their best interests, we will decide for them. Now, this, of course, is the very essence of the colonial procedure. It's universally repugnant to the colonized, and only within the most recent time has it come to be recognized for what it really is, oppression. Sometimes blatant and harsh, sometimes benign and seemingly so humane, but oppression nonetheless. Having gone through such a system, I have concluded that the primary effect of this education is to condition people so that they will be willing to serve the purposes of others. True education can only mean to become aware that one makes choices and one is responsible for those choices. In this manner, education is a process towards personal freedom and self-determination, not a process of control and dehumanization. The government of the Northwest Territories and its administration had moved to Yellowknife in 1967. The territorial government said it wanted to provide services to us, education, welfare, housing, and so on. But whatever the policy of the territorial government is called, assimilation, colonization, or genocide, its goal has been to destroy us, that's Dene. Democracy means 
not only the possibility to vote for one party or the other, having the right to vote in a political system that is imposed on us is not democracy. It is not freedom of choice. It is only colonialism. Democracy should mean that all people are able to choose what kind of institutions they want to have and what kind of political system they want to have for themselves. The government made all kinds of promises, and we found that those promises were not true. So we began having discussions among ourselves, and we started talking of our land. Then started the talk of building our own government, which would enable us to control our own life. We must keep and hold on to our land. On this land, we will also build our government. In October 1969, we and our 16 chiefs established the Indian Brotherhood of the Northwest Territory. For 50 years, the commissioners, the territorial councillors and administrators had looked down to our chiefs. Now we were going to make decisions for ourselves, and our colonizers couldn't accept that. The reason our views may seem strange and unrealistic is that no one has ever bothered to take us seriously, to look at us closely as Dene people. It may all seem unrealistic for a while to the government, but we know that we have been what we are for a long time. The government's inability to understand us in its misinterpretation of our views should not mislead the people of Canada on what is reality here with the Dene people. Our reality is that this is our land, that we are a nation, a people, and that we want to live our own ways. In 1972, the federal government proposed to establish Indian Reserve and to give us some cash money in compensation for our operational rights. The government calls such a process a land claim settlement, implying that we have a slight claim on our own land. The um, land claims of the Dene is a claim not only for land but also for political rights. The land claims is our fight to gain recognition as a different group of people with our own way of seeing things, our own values, our own lifestyle, our own laws. The land claims is a fight for self-determination using our own system with which we have survived till now. This system is based on community life whether it be a settlement or a trapping camp, whether people live by working in a wage economy or off the land. The laws we follow are concerned with all the people, not to benefit a few at the expense of the rest. The way decisions are made is another law. No one can decide for another person. Everyone is involved in a discussion and a decision made by everyone. Our way is to try and give freedom to a person as he knows what he wants. People are using the word claim. We have no claim. The land belongs to the Dene. Our problem is that non-Dene have come on our land and they say they have rights here. They're making decisions on our land. They're developing our land. That's what the problem is. In 1973, we declared that we had a legal interest in the 450,000 square miles of our land. In March 
1975, George Berger started the Mackenzie Valley Pipeline Inquiry. He traveled to 26 Dene communities and listened to more than 1,000 Dene, testifying in their own languages. We were really happy to meet an official who was patient enough to listen to us and honest enough to report what we said. During the Berger Inquiry, people did a very good job in defining what in their minds development was. When they defined development, they firstly meant that uh, development was something which would benefit uh, people collectively. That it was people primarily that were the, the should be the most um, important element in any kind of development. If there was no human development, then one couldn't call a project development even because it was change, even because it was employment or because it was material gain. In our case in the north here, development has generally meant uh, the undermining of the original people. Every time the white people come to the north or come to our land and start tearing up the land, I feel as if they're cutting our own flesh. That's the way we feel about our land. It's our flesh. Well, development has to be something that is transferring control to the people. If you look at either pipelines or sawmills or dams or new mines, we're not against any of those kinds of things. What we're saying is development should be orderly, it should be planned, it should be at the pace of of local people, it should be at the benefit of local people. On the question of the pipeline, the Territorial Council took strong position against us. George Barnaby, elected to the Territorial Council in 1975, resigned. The Territorial Council is one place where Dene law is not respected at all. There is very little involvement by the people. The whole system is from the south, and they are trying to fit us into it. Councillors, commissioners, or administrators make decisions for everyone else. In our Dene system, our leaders don't make decisions. They act only after all the people together have made a decision. Sometimes I say that if the commissioner and top executives were all trappers and hunters, things would be different. But I see it would make no difference. Wherever only a few people decide for the rest of the population, it oppresses people. In July 1975, at Fort Simpson, we issued the Dene Declaration. At the National Assembly, October 1976, in Fort Simpson, we prepared the agreement in principle. And later that month, October 25, 1976, we went to Ottawa to present it to the federal government. Our position was supported by 2,000 pages of comprehensive research. We came very, very close to actually getting an agreement in principle with the former minister, Warren Allman. We were discussing the kinds of systems of government that could be established so that our people uh, would be recognized, our nation would be recognized within Canada. So there are, there are people very high up in government that do support this position. We believe that we have a lot of support across Canada, and uh, we are seeking the support of people in the South to recognize the self-determination of, of the Dene Nation in the North. win the strong Dene nation the sons of creation free in the land they live in we're seeking a new relationship with the rest of Canada 
we insist that uh, we be able to negotiate all of our rights in one sitting. Um, political rights, traditional rights, the whole rights of our nation. What we are seeking is recognition of our right to set up the system of government. We want to, to define the boundary uh, within our traditional homeland. All citizens uh, living in this area will have full rights, whether they are Dene or non-Dene. We are not trying to build only an organization. We also want to build a government. Nation means government, means people. We have to make it known. We are a nation, we are a government. Our position is not uh, a separatist position. What we have very clearly um, set out as part of our goal is the process of, of decolonization of our people. That work will take a long time. Uh, the recognition of our rights to exist as a people, to have our own institutions, to have our own government, will only establish the framework in which we will begin to do the work of decolonization. young Danaz are the future people who will continue the direction we will all take after this assembly is over. We're young, we're learning, and I would like to say to the elders, we're not going to push you over. We want your help. We want to help you in this whole struggle for self-determination. You are our elders. We are your children. You are children of your elders. We will not change our values. We may change like you have changed from your elders, but we will be still your flesh and blood. We will think like you. We respect you for being our elders. You are part of us, and we are part of you. We are a part of this world. We are like the river that flows and changes, yet is always the same. The river cannot flow too slow, and it cannot flow too fast. It is a river, and it will always be a river, for that is what it was meant to be. We are like the river, but we are not the river. We are human. That is what we were meant to be. We were not meant to be destroyed. And we were not meant to take over other parts of the world. We were meant to be ourselves. <laughs> 